Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. Today's video is about preparing your photos for print with a lab. And the lab I'm working with today is Sol Digital. I'm getting some photos ready to print a book like the one I have here. And the things I'm looking for in a print lab is that they have, number one, a good reputation, and number two, they've got some help, some ICC profiles, so that I can make adjustments to the photos before I send them off to the lab, before I dive into getting profiles and scoping out the lab and getting your photos prepped. If you're interested in printing with Solid Digital, check out the description below the video got an offer code for you. It'll save you a little bit of money if you're ordering one of their print books. And um, let me show you really what is on uh, Sol Digital's site. This is their main landing page. Sol Digital has a whole bunch of different products, everything from photos to wall art to photo books. And it's the photo books that I'll be working with today. But more importantly, what I like about Sol Digital is they have a lot of support for preparing your photos for print with their lab. Up here at the top on all of their pages is the professional zone. And they have a ton of support material for folks that are looking to get more than just a straight print. And in particular, what I am most interested in is ICC profiles. Sol's got ICC profiles for every one of their products. And what's very interesting what they've done here is not only have they said, here's the profile, but they've also given instruction on what to set certain things at can set the rendering intent as well as whether or not to simulate the paper color. Now I'll be focusing in on the photo books professional line and there are three different profiles. Well, why are there three profiles? Well, here's a sample book that I made and you've got the cover. You can have an acrylic cover so you can have a profile for that. And then of course your paper type, you know, I chose to do a, a glossy print and you can see I've got the same photo printed twice. I'll come back to that in just a minute you can have either a matte or a glossy finish. And so you have profiles for each one of those. So what you wanna do is download all of these profiles and then store them wherever they need to be for Lightroom. And Sol is very nice. They give you a link, soft proof in Lightroom, and they tell you exactly where to put those particular files. So once you've downloaded the ICC profiles, you move them into these locations and restart Lightroom, you're ready to go. Now I've got a different video that will go deeper into soft proofing in general in Lightroom. And I'll let you go and look at that for details on installing the ICC profiles and where to put them. But I wanna get into Lightroom now and show you specifically the types of changes that I made to my photos to prepare them for printing in this photo book. In Lightroom, in the develop module, I want to turn on soft proofing. There's a checkbox in the toolbar at the bottom, or you can press the S hotkey and you enter the soft proofing mode. A couple of things change on the screen. And in particular, we end up with a slightly different looking histogram area. Very first thing is create a proof copy. What this does is it creates a virtual copy so that you're going to make changes to the virtual copy to prepare the extra contrast or color or whatever you need to do to get the photo looking like your original that you processed on screen. It's great you can work on a copy. Now, two things we want to do right away, or three actually. First is in the profile area. Now, I've already loaded these Sol Digital profiles into Lightroom, but if you do not see the Sol Digital ICC profiles, click Other, and you will get a list of all of the different profiles you've installed and just hit the check boxes. Now I will point out, you don't see one here for the acrylic cover. Why is that? Well, the acrylic cover is a CMKY profile. Lightroom does not work with those. The good news is when I did my test print, I just did a straight RGB, sorry, sRGB export, and the cover looks really, really good. So thankfully you don't need to do specific profiling for the acrylic cover. If you are interested in doing that, you can do that in Photoshop and Sol Digital has instructions on their website of how to work with ICC profiles in Photoshop as well. All right, with the profiles available, I'm choosing the glossy ones for the photo book and per the website, setting the intent to relative and turning on simulate paper and ink. Those are all the settings that are recommended by Sol Digital. So I set those, I wanna match those settings to what my lab is recommending. Now from here, uh, I'm gonna to toggle on and off the soft proofing. It's off right now 
and turn it back on. So it seems like you know there's a little bit of a you know a bit of a faded look. The colors have gotten a little bit toned down, and that's pretty typical when we're soft proofing, right? The the output, our paper, is going to have a different characteristic and a different feel than our screens. Now the changes that I typically make for any photo print is increasing exposure by like a third of a stop or so. The prints tend to be a little bit darker, so maybe around there. And for Sol Digital, I have been increasing contrast a pretty healthy amount. I'm gonna go maybe to about 30 or so on this photo. Let's leave it right around there. Also clarity to increase just the crispness of detail. Again, we have a, a different medium when ink hits paper, things get a little different. And a last tip is the salt paper tends to run a little bit cool. I want to introduce a bit of warmth back into the paper. And I've been doing that with the tone curve. So go into the tone curve. If you do not see channel RGB, play around with this setting here. You want to be able to choose all the individual channels and go to the blue channel and just give it a very, very tiny tug downward, just a little bit, a very small amount. I recommend saving that as a custom point curve. And you can see I've already saved one. So I'll choose that and we can see how much of a nudge that's going down. So before that change and after, by reducing a little bit of blue, it's introducing a little bit of yellow into the photo. And so it's counteracting what is a cooler paper. And so that's, that's been, that's good. You know, I, I like to, uh, to adjust that. And that really plays into areas that are going to be in the highlights. For a color photo, that becomes less of a concern, but if you have very bright highlights, the tone of the paper can tend to start coming through there because bright whites, you have very little ink that's actually on the paper and the paper's tone can affect that. Now the last step in soft proofing, those are the main changes I make. Over here in the comparison area, you see I have this YY. I'll click on that and I want to make sure that before it says master photo. So this is the master photo and this is my proof copy. As I make adjustments, the proof copy will change and we can zoom in and check different areas to make sure things look really, really close, if not identical. The goal is to get the photo on the right hand side to look just like the photo on the left hand side. And so I'll skim around to make sure that things are looking good, the detail is looking good. I might increase clarity just a touch more, just a tiny bit, a little more of that wave action there, that splash kind of thing. And then otherwise making sure I've got the colors are good. And of course, if you notice any blemishes or uh, dust spots you didn't catch, now is the time to fix those because you don't want to have those showing up on your print. Once I'm satisfied that the proof preview is matching the master. I'll turn off that side-by-side -side view and I'll turn off soft proofing. Now the photo at this point on screen will look different than your original photo. Remember with soft proofing turned off, we're not accounting for the paper, the ink, the gamut of the output device, all those types of things. So it looks a little different on screen. The last step of course is to export the photo. So it's a typical export from Lightroom, but Sol Digital does give you some additional guidance there as well. On the same page where it talks about soft proofing in Lightroom, scroll on down and it tells you exactly how to export the photo. And in particular, making sure you export sRGB, 100% quality JPEG. And that's what you want to do. Make sure that gets delivered to Sol Digital and either you're going to be using their software to build the book or uh, you may be building it using a template, but that's how you want to export the photos for Sol. And so I'm following their guidance to tell me what is the best choice for the profile settings as well as the export settings. You want to follow the instructions of your lab because if you trust the lab, you want to do what they say so you get the best result possible. So I decided to print a test book, you know, and, and invest a bit of time and money into making sure I was happy with the way that the proofing came out. And also to see, is there really a difference in doing the additional steps of proofing versus just take what I have on screen, export it as Sol Digital wants and get the results. And when I look at these side by side, certainly this one here in my left side, this is no changes, no proofing whatsoever. And the right side has the proofing changes similar to what I showed you uh, just on this other photo as well. 
and certainly there is an improvement with the proofing. So it's worth the effort to go through the proofing. Uh, I would say that you end up seeing about a, a 10 to 15% improvement in the photo. And that's similar with what I see when printing in the studio here as well. So proofing does take a little bit of extra time, but it is worth it if you want to get that, that extra crispness, better contrast, and overall the same representation of your photo on the printed page as when you styled it on screen. So to recap this all, you want to get ICC profiles from the lab you're printing with. And I really like the way that Sol Digital's put together their professional zone. There's a lot of help, a lot of information, and the right set of profiles you need. Soft proof on a virtual copy, so you're not adjusting on your original and then export according to what your lab wants. For Sol Digital, that's 100% quality JPEG and an sRGB color space. And from there, you're, uh, you're gonna be using the software from Sol, or if you're sending in just a single print, send it off to your lab and then wait for your uh, your book or your project to come back. I've got another book that is, uh, that is in process right now. It's being printed. And uh, I will say they turn these things around very quickly, about a week. And I have the book in my hands and uh, I am very eager to get to the next one. Hope you found this useful. And if you're looking to do some printing, there's a discount code below for Sol Digital. Give it a shot. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.